Even as the hurricane's catastrophic tally is still being calculated, the questions about whether and how to rebuild what was lost are underway. One, preserves, uh, one person in a good position to weigh in on those questions is Jared Moskowitz. He is Florida's former disaster chief, former state rep, now a Broward County commissioner and a candidate for Congress. He took an aerial tour over western, uh, the west coast of Florida, and he joins us now from his home, I believe, in Parkland. Uh, Jared, good morning. Great good morning. to see you. Good morning. How are you doing? Well, we're well. Tell us about the aerial tour. I mean, you have experience in managing disasters. How bad is it? Yeah, so, you know, I, I took a tour of the whole area. I kind of, I flew in via helicopter to kind of get an idea of what it looked like on land and then go out to the barrier islands. It reminds me very similar to what Mexico Beach looked like after uh, Hurricane Michael, that category a five storm, except Mexico Beach was a small area of the panhandle. This is, I don't know, a hundred times the size of, of Mexico Beach between, you know, Pine Island, and Fort Myers Beach and Sanibel, the devastation to the Barrier Islands, I, I got to imagine somewhere between 85 to 90% of those structures are either destroyed or so badly damaged they'll need to be demoed. You know, I'm glad you brought up Mexico Beach. Um, I don't know if you remember, we were with you in Mexico Beach uh, shortly when you, shortly afterwards was what, like three or four months and you were the head of the Department of Emergency Management with the governor taking the tour. And we saw literally foundations with no homes on them, much like is happening in Fort Myers Beach. And we also saw newer construction as if there had not been a storm. And, and what a glaring example of how to rebuild and where to rebuild. And I wonder if you would weigh in on the future of building along the coast and in Florida, as we've seen totally, um, and, and, and how to do that and, and should government get involved in, in more mandates about that? Yeah, so, you know, those are local decisions, obviously. You know, I'm in Broward County. Dade and Broward have the strongest building code in the country. You know, other areas of Florida should be looking at that. And again, it's not just the wind. Uh, it's also the water. We know how to build to withstand hurricane wind because we've done it uh, in Dade and Broward and other counties that have adopted the code. But when it comes to water, you're right. If you look at Fort Myers Beach or Mexico Beach, the newer structures that were elevated off the ground, yeah, maybe they have damage to their first floor, but the whole structure isn't gone. Uh, the stuff that is not elevated, it's the same picture in Fort Myers Beach and in Sanibel where homes are washed off their foundations, they're in the street, they're in their neighbor's yard. So listen, there, there will be weather events that no matter what we do, there will be devastation, but we can build to withstand them so that we don't see the complete devastation we're seeing on some of these barrier islands. Yeah, uh, Jared, obviously you are, we believe, the leading candidate, polls tell us that, you know, for Congress to succeed Ted Deutsch for the district that goes from Fort Lauderdale up into Southern uh, Palm Beach County. So here's kind of a predictable question. There are, it's a heavily democratic district and some diehard Democrats say, yeah, well, he's a nice young man. He's been a good state rep, but he went to work for Ron DeSantis who they detest. So what is your relationship with Governor DeSantis? I mean, you worked with him for nearly four years. Uh, what differences can you tell us about his political positions and yours? Well, look, the governor and I had different political positions when he offered me the job. The governor and I had different political positions when I did the job for two and a half years. The governor and I still have different political positions. He knew that when he offered me the job, I knew that when I took the job, our relationship is fine. Uh, obviously, you know, he gave me an opportunity and I think I did a good job for uh, both uh, the citizens of the state of Florida uh, and for his administration. And so, you know, look, the governor and I have different views on policies, but, you know, the Division of Emergency Management has a rich history on Democrats and Republicans working together. Craig Fugate right. was a Democrat. He worked uh, for, uh, for a Republican. Uh, the division uh, director before that uh, was a Republican working for Lawton Childs. And so, you know, there's a rich history of that. It's the same reason you just saw Ron DeSantis and Joe Biden uh, get together, not just on Hurricane Ian, but they did it on Surfside. And so, 
You know, look, I had a horrible tragedy uh, in my state house district, in my hometown, at my high school, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Government failed those families, multiple layers of government. And when the opportunity to help people in a nonpartisan way in their time of need, dealing with their disasters, I went back home, I talked to those families, and the idea of turning that down for partisan politics uh, didn't seem like the right thing when you know, they have empty rooms in their homes. They have empty chairs at the dinner table. Sure. You know, no high school graduation, no college graduation, no future. Sure. And so I just didn't think it was a time for partisan politics. I thought it was a time for public service. We see in disaster time that that occurs regularly, to your point. I, I want to ask you about, again, going forward and the costs of the storm. Um, the, the people who have flood insurance from the National Flood Pool, and I know so many people in South Florida who live along the coast have that, is financially pretty manageable. Expensive, but doable by all accounts, especially when you compare it to windstorm. And what by all accounts is a collapsing windstorm insurance industry in this state. As a, a congressman, if and when you get to Congress, would there be on your plate some, some work toward a national disaster pool, which would include windstorm and things like wildfire damage and and flood maybe um and yeah. spreading spreading mm -hmm. the hurt that way and making it more affordable yeah i do think we need to establish a national catastrophic fund i do think that we should establish in that fund uh some sort of insurance some sort of pool to help out the insurance companies manage these disasters i mean at the end of the day florida texas louisiana alabama mississippi you know we deal with hurricanes we're on we're all in the Gulf of Mexico, which seems these hurricanes get into the Gulf of Mexico and they go through rapid intensification. We're dealing with category four, category five storms more often. You have earthquakes and fires in California and Nevada. You had uh, fires in Colorado. You have floods uh, just recently in Kentucky. Uh, and so, you know, these events uh, are nationwide and there should be a nationwide uh, program to help amortize the sort of damage that we deal with so that it isn't just up to state governments. I mean, my insurance company, my own insurance company dropped me uh, and claimed that I had hurricane exposure. I, I guess they just found that out, by the way. Wow, I think we buried the lead here. That's a whole <laughs> That's a whole other segment we can do. It. Yeah, they, I, they just wow. discovered I had hurricane insurance. I mean, hurricane exposure. I guess they didn't realize that I, they insured me when I lived in Florida <laughs> previously. But the point is the insurance market is broken. There is yeah. more the state can do, there's no doubt. But I do think there needs to be a national uh, a national solution. Jared Moskowitz, always good to speak with you. We'll see what happens with your campaign for Congress uh, on November 8th. Thanks very much. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys.